Greetings, as I welcome you to our chapel service today on this third Sunday of Eastertide, where we gather to worship around our telephones and our iPads and our laptops and our desktops. The world is a very different place, but God is still God, and we gather to gather to worship. Today's service will be just a little bit different because the sermon was recorded outside as I hiked a trail, so you are going to want to stay tuned to that part of the service. Gather together as we worship God this day. Join me in our responsive call to worship. When everything was dark and it seemed that the sun would never shine again, God's love broke through. A love that was too strong, too wide, too deep for death to hold. May, May it be so again in the darkness of our current days. We praise the God of love for the light of new life that shone on the early witnesses of resurrection. We, we seek that same light of new life to shine in our worried hearts today. Come, Easter light of life, hope, and joy. Live in us each day. And we will be bearers of that light into the lives of others. Let us worship our risen Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. in the midst of quarantine days may we be reminded of our connection still our connection to one another and to you O oh God we come in these moments with many different feelings some in fear some in boredom some nearing despair stay with us as we pray stay with us day by day, in every part of our journey, no matter how full of fear or despair we may be. Open our eyes in these moments that we may see the gifts of God in our lives. And may this increase in us a deep feeling of gratitude through these challenging times. Yes, open our eyes, Lord. For without the gift of your revelation, we do not recognize you. Appear before us in unexpected ways. Give us eyes to see so that we too may proclaim to a world in despair that we have seen the risen Lord, our Christ. Amen. Thank you. 
Our scripture reading today comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, and it is a rather long reading. But as I looked at it, it's really hard to cut part of it out. Because it, it is the text that we know as the road to Emmaus. That same day, Sunday, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, nine miles out of Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking of Jesus' death when suddenly Jesus himself came along and began walking beside them, but they didn't recognize him. You seem to be in a deep discussion about something, he said. What are you so concerned about? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces, and one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about the terrible thing that happened there. What things? Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth, they said. He was a true prophet and a mighty teacher, highly regarded by both God and man. But the chief priests and our religious leaders arrested him and handed him over to the Roman government to be condemned to death and they crucified him. We had hoped that he was the Messiah, the one who had come to rescue Israel. And now, beside all this that happened three days ago, some women from our group of followers were at the tomb early this morning and they came back with an amazing report that his body was missing and that they had seen some angels there who told them that Jesus is alive. Well, some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, Jesus' body was gone, just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are. You find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted by the prophets that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his time of glory? Then Jesus quoted them passage after passage from the writings of the prophets, beginning with the book of Genesis and going right on through the scriptures, explaining what the passages meant and what they said about himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus and the end of their journey. Jesus would soon have gone on, but they begged him to stay the night with them as it was getting late. So he went home with them and they sat down to eat. And Jesus took a small loaf of bread and asked God's blessing and broke it and passed it to them when suddenly their eyes were opened. They recognized him. And at that moment, he vanished from their sight. They began telling each other how their hearts had felt strangely warmed as he had talked with them and explained the scriptures during the walk down the road. Within the hour, they were on their way to Jerusalem where the eleven disciples and the other followers of Jesus greeted them with these words, The Lord has truly risen. Then they told them what happened on the road and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Hi there. It is such a beautiful spring day. I just thought we'd take a walk together. All of you who know me know how much I love to get outside and find a trail to enjoy nature. Today I'm at River Bend Natural Area in West Fort Worth, so you're gonna hear a, a mixture of natural sounds, lots of birds, and then some city noises in the background. But as I walk along the trail, I 
think about that story from our scripture today as uh, we call it the, the road to Emmaus. You know the story. It's a Sunday afternoon and the disciples are walking along the road outside of Jerusalem. They're on their way to Emmaus, their hometown. They're headed home. And it's a long walk by our standards today. It's nine miles. It would probably take them about three hours. But I imagine that on this day, their hearts are heavy and they may be moving a little slower than usual. And so as they walk along and as they talk, a stranger comes down the trail alongside them, listening in on their conversation. And then the stranger speaks and says, what is this you're discussing so intently? I imagine they looked at him like he had just landed from another planet because everyone on earth knew what had happened in Jerusalem in the past few days. I mean, it would be like someone coming along the trail here today and saying, how's it going? And I might reply, it is so good to be outside and enjoy nature during this time of challenge when we're all confined by the coronavirus pandemic. And if that person said, what pandemic? Well, I would think they were crazy. And that's exactly what the disciples thought about Jesus. I mean, when we read this text, it's actually hard not to laugh. Jesus pulls a fast one on the disciples. He knows exactly what happened in Jerusalem the last few days. He was there. But they don't recognize this man as Jesus. And so they begin to tell him their version of the story. The arrest, the crucifixion, the death and the burial. And then, just this morning, the empty tomb. They're confused. It is all unreal. This one in whom they had put their hopes was dead and now is missing. At this point, Jesus initiates the conversation again and he proceeds to connect the dots, so to speak, as he hopes to help them see from another perspective. He begins to tell the history of God's work from Genesis all through the Hebrew Scriptures as it points to a suffering Messiah. That's a long story. It's a good thing they had nine miles to walk, I guess. But you know, when I read this text, I get so frustrated. I have to admit, one thing about this text drives me crazy is that we don't get to hear that story that Jesus tells from beginning to end. I sure wish we had those details, but we don't. Sometimes in this life of faith, it's so important to just learn to live with the mystery. And so it was as they came closer to Emmaus, it was important in terms of hospitality in first century Palestine to invite strangers to stay with you. And so they invited Jesus to come to their home, to stay with them for the evening, to have dinner at their home. I imagine they had a lot more questions about that mystery. And there at the table, as they gather with this stranger, and the stranger takes the bread, and lifts his eyes with thanks to God for the bread and then breaks it and gives it to those around the table. The scripture says immediately their eyes were opened and in that moment they realized that Jesus was in their midst. Jesus was right there with them and had been all along. And just as quickly as they realize this truth, Jesus is no longer there. More mystery. And what do they do? Well, as late as it is, they put their shoes on and they head back to Jerusalem 
to tell their friends that they what they have experienced. And I imagine they arrive there in Jerusalem out of breath. But they can get out those most important words to convey their message. The Lord is risen. I think about the road that we are walking through these challenging days as we make our way in days of quarantine. You know, just a few weeks back, we were, we were walking through our days looking pretty good with haircuts and perms and no need for a hat. We're looking forward to gathering with friends and family for Easter. But right there before our eyes, a road just washed out. And now we find ourselves on a very uncertain path. Fear and grief despair, and even boredom threaten to steal our hope. Circumstances and feelings vary from person to person, but these are challenging times, and that is undeniable. Today, however, may we be reminded of the good news that we do not walk alone. Christ walks with us on this path of life. The one who is the way is with us every step of the way, even through the hard times, even through the mystery. You know, the disciples didn't recognize Jesus because, well, they just really weren't expecting to see him. And we are often much the same way. Our expectations of the holy in our midst are actually quite low. But sometimes, sometimes there are those moments when our hearts are strangely warmed. For me, those moments are often in nature. It reminds me that I am not alone. Within me, there is one who is sustaining me and around me sustaining all that is. One who holds everything together on the good times, the smooth stretches of road, and on those bumpy roads of life as well. And one is holding us all, even now. This one, the Christ, is with us. And as we make space to notice, will be reminded that all shall be well. So may we realize anew this day that Jesus, the Christ, is here. And we do not walk alone. Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along my pilgrim journey, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me.
We are delighted that you made time in your day to join with us. And we hold you in our prayers through these challenging days. And in these days, may you be keenly aware that the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of life and love, walks beside you to companion you, dwells above you to watch over you, comes beneath you to uphold you, follows behind you to protect you. The Spirit of the Christ, the Spirit of life and love, always goes before you to show you the way. Go in the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ into your daily activities. For God is with you. Amen.